Hey, que la que hay mi gente, it's Rocky here from SpeakSpanishFaster.com and in today's video we are going to be covering 10 verbs that all beginner Spanish speakers or people learning Spanish as beginners should definitely know. These are common verbs that you're going to hear over and over again and that you're also going to be using very often when you are speaking Spanish. So today we're going to break down these 10 verbs and I will of course tell you what they mean, but I will also show you a few examples of them in a sentence so that you can learn them better. All right, so without further ado, let's jump straight into it. All right, so the first verb we are starting with here is estar. Estar, very common. I'm sure everybody here watching this video has heard or used the verb estar. It means to be, not to be confused with the verb ser, which also means to be, and I've done a video on that. And I'll touch a little bit about um, the difference between those two verbs in this video. But estar talks more about kind of your temporary um, state of being. That's one great way to remember it. So, um, you know, you use it for saying yo estoy, I am. You know, you could talk about how you're feeling. You could talk about what you're doing. Like in this first example, yo no estoy jugando al ajedrez. Yo estoy jugando a las damas, all right? I'm not playing chess, I'm playing checkers. So, estoy jugando, what, what is the person like? I am, and then ando. So anytime you're using the ing in Spanish, which is indio, anytime you're using that, you would be using a form of estar before that. Also, like I said, talk about um, to describe somebody in a temporary sense. So, tú estás muy linda esta noche. So, you are very pretty tonight. So, that um, the word tonight kind of makes this temporary. We don't know if this person's pretty every day. <laughs> That's kind of messed up, but we don't know if this person's pretty every day. Pero esta noche, tú estás muy linda. And then again, él o ella... Está corriendo una maratón ahora mismo y seguro está sediento. So he or she is running a marathon right now and he or she must be thirsty. So here are a few more examples. Nosotros estamos ocupados en este momento. We are busy right now. Vosotros estáis de vacaciones hasta la semana que viene. You all are on vacation until next week. Now, the reason I put you all is to emphasize the y'all. It's the you in the plural. So this sentence could be, you are on vacation until next week, talking to two people, but using the word you. Now, keep in mind the word or the tense, vosotros, isn't used very often in, well, it's not really used, it's not used in any Caribbean Spanish it's not really used in any Latin American Spanish. There might be one or two countries. Like I know Argentina uses vos, which I'll create a whole nother video about that because that's a whole topic in itself. But I'm not sure if they even use vosotros that often. So vosotros is usually, um, you'll only hear it in Spain for the most part, all right? But it's very common in Spain. So if you're going to Spain, you may want to practice the vosotros tenses if you're ne if you're never going to Spain or you don't communicate with people from Spain on a daily basis, like let's say you live somewhere where there's only Mexicans or a lot of Mexicans or people from South America or Central America, or there's only Dominicans or Puerto Ricans, then you're not really going to need to know the vosotros tense. Because we use to say you all in the plural, we simply use ustedes. So... Um, I'm sure a lot of you already know that, but I just wanted to be clear on that. And in the last example, ellos no están satisfechos con mi desempeño en la empresa. Are they not Are they not satisfied with my performance in the company? Okay, so that's actually a question. Let me read it again. Ellos no están satisfechos con mi desempeño en la empresa. So that changes it. And notice what I did there, and this will also help you when you're reading Spanish, talking Spanish, and listening to Spanish is simply by changing my intonation at the end of the sentence or kind of throughout the sentence, but specifically at the end by ending on a higher pitch in la empresa versus en la empresa. 
empresa, empresa. Changes it from a statement to a question. Now let's get into ser. Now, of course, like I mentioned earlier, ser is sometimes confused with estar since they fulfill similar functions. But ser is used more to designate the permanent or the long-term state in which a noun is. So as you can see here, yo soy un adulto responsable. So here I am a responsible adult. I'm talking about not temporarily, but long term. Like this is how this is my permanent being is I am a responsible adult. All right. Tú eres demasiado irresponsable. You are too irresponsible. Él no es el mejor jugador del equipo. Es el segundo mejor. He is not the best player on the team. He is the second best. Let's look at another example. Nosotros somos expertos en programación. We are programming experts. Vosotra, vosotras sois las más inteligentes de la clase. Are y'all the smartest in the class? And again, what I said about vosotros, even I struggle with it because I never use it. And I obviously I didn't grow up using it or anything. So vosotras, vosotros is, is not very common in, you know, this this half of the world ellos ellas no son tan buenos como parecen they are not as good as they seem so they are anytime but it's the long long term permanent state of being all right so ser estar not too difficult right now one more time let's just solidify the difference all right so when when in doubt like oh should i use ser or should i use Estar, all you have to do is ask yourself the following question. Is the state of the noun you are referring to permanent or transitory? So if it is permanent, something that is not going to change in the short term, the verb is ser. If it is transitory, then the verb is estar. Okay, so that should make things pretty easy. Next, third verb, very important, querer. Querer. Um, of course, that verb means to want. Querer means to want. This is very important. Yo quiero comer un helado. I want to eat an ice cream. Tú quieres salir esta noche? Do you want to go out tonight? Él, ella no quiere ir a trabajar. Quiere ir a jugar al fútbol. So he or she doesn't want to go to work. He or she wants to play soccer. So you can see that the verb querer, after you conjugate it in the proper tense, it's followed by the full verb, okay, comer. So you wouldn't say yo quiero como un helado. It's yo, yo quiero comer, quieres salir, quiere ir. So you're using the full form of the verb there, all right? Next, let's look at the verb tener. Yo tengo un canal de YouTube. I have a YouTube channel. Tú tienes tiempo todavía. You still have time. Ella tiene hambre. So he or she is hungry. And I'm going to touch on this in a second using the verb tener to express having hunger. All right. Because it's very common. But let's just quickly look at a few more examples of tener being used. Nosotros tenemos grandes sueños. We have big dreams. Vosotros tenéis muchas ideas interesantes. Y'all have many interesting ideas. Ellos no tienen los boletos de avión. They don't have plane tickets. So keep in mind, it's very easy to confuse tener and estar when we are referring to the transit the transitory state of a noun, but it is differentiated depending on whether it precedes a noun or an adjective in cases where it does not express possession. So thus the second example um, that I'm going to show you here, el tiene hambre versus el está hambriento. The second, the second example would be with the verb estar. All right. So el tiene hambre. He has hunger is what is really being said, but it's translated to he is hungry. 
but also él está hambriento. But you can't say él está hambre or él tiene hambriento. So you say él tiene hambre or él está hambriento. All right. So I would say keep it simple. When you want to talk about somebody being hungry, somebody being thirsty, use the verb tener. Yo tengo sed. Yo, yo tengo hambre. All right. Next, let's look at the verb ir. Ir, very, very important verb. Um, ir is used to say what I am going to do. I love introducing this verb to students to talk about the future because, of course, in Spanish, there is the future tense. But in the beginning, when you're learning, it's very easy to just simply use the verb ir to express what's going to happen in the future. All right, so if you use the verb ir followed by a verb, then that's something you are going to do in um, the future. And I'll give you an example. But like right here, yo voy a cenar a la casa de mis padres. So I am going to eat dinner at my parents' house, or I'm going to dinner at my parents' house. Now, you could say cenaré a la casa de mis padres. I will go to dinner at my parents' house, but sometimes it's difficult to remember the future tense. So the thing with ir is you don't really have to learn tenses. All you have to learn is how to conjugate ir. So yo voy, tu va, tu vas, el, ella, va. Once you learn those, you simply can add a verb to the end of those. Yo voy a hablar, yo voy a caminar, yo voy a jugar. So I'm going to do blank, and that's you talking in the future tense without having to learn the actual future um, conjugations or the, the future tenses of those words, of those verbs, all right? So, tú no vas a la fiesta, you are not going to the party. Um, él va al partido, is he going to the game? So another examples, nosotros vamos a la playa, we go to the beach, or you could say we are going to the beach. Vosotros vais a trabajar. You all are going to work. Ellas no van al bar, van a la biblioteca. So they don't go to the bar or they're not going to the bar. They go to the library. Next is the verb ver, ver, ver. Depends if you want to say B, V's with the B sound or the V sound. It's really up to you. I've done a video on the B versus the V before, um, but let's get into some examples. So, ver means to see. So, yo veo a mi madre una vez a la semana. I see my mom once a week. Tú ves lo que estás haciendo. Do you see what you are doing? Next, él, ella no ve nada sin sus anteojos. He doesn't see anything without his glasses. Nosotros Vemos lo que queremos ver. We see what we want to see. Vosotros veis una mancha de humedad en la pared, ¿no? You see a damp stain on the wall, right? Ellos, ellas ven un gran potencial en mí. They see great potential in me. All right, so the next verb, hacer. Hacer is very common. Again, yo hago mi trabajo todas las mañanas. I do my work every morning. Now remember, I guess I should touch on this, but when we say hacer in Spanish, the H is silent. So one mistake I hear uh, non-native speakers or beginner students when they're learning, is they'll say hacer, but the H in Spanish is silent. Okay. So it's que tu hace, not que tu haces. All right. So tu haces abdominales en el gimnasio. Do you do sit-ups at the gym? Él no hace lo que quiere, él hace lo que debe. He doesn't do what he wants, he does what he must. In addition to his general use, the verb hacer, to do, can take on a large number of meanings and uses depending on the context. So, for example, it can be used to replace other verbs to express a transitory state of a noun by means of an adjective. All right, so... Um, Hace frío en esta casa. So it's cold in this house. Now you can also use the verb hacer going to the first bullet point here 
instead of saying like I cook eggs for breakfast, yo cocino huevos fritos todas las mañanas. You could say yo hago huevos fritos todas las mañanas. So instead of saying I cook eggs, I make eggs. So when you're referring to like cooking, I make this, I make dinner, you know, you could say you could use cocinar or you can simply use the verb hacer. And also you would use hacer in combination with an adverb of time or quantity. So no hace mucho tiempo que te conozco. Next verb, comer. Who doesn't love to eat? Yo como una hamburguesa con mis papas fritas. I eat a hamburger with french fries. Tú no comes tanto como deberías. You don't eat as much as you should. Ella come espinaca. Does she eat spinach? Nosotros siempre comemos en mi casa. We always eat at my house. Vosotros coméis lasaña de berenjena. You eat eggplant lasagna. Ellos comen asado todos los domingos. They eat barbecue every Sunday. Next verb, poder. Poder is to be able to. Yo puedo jugar al Minecraft 12 horas seguida. I can play Minecraft 12 hours straight. Tú no puedes hacer lo que quieres. You can't do what you want. Ella puede correr 40 kilómetros sin cansarse. She can run for 40 kilometers without getting tired. Next verb is tomar. Now, tomar has two meanings. Um, well, it probably has more meanings than that, but the common ones are to take and to drink. All right. But let's look at a few examples. Yo tomo el libro que está sobre la mesa. I take the book that is on the table. Tú tomas la línea U del metro. You take the subway line U. Él no toma bien las críticas personales. He doesn't take personal criticism well. Nosotros no tomamos nada prestado. We don't borrow anything. Vosotros tomáis el camino equivocado cada día. You all take the wrong path every day. Ellas toman el liderazgo del proyecto. Do they take the leadership of the project? And like I said, it could be used, you could use the verb to drink. All right, um, tomar to drink. So you can say, yo quiero tomar agua. So you could say, I want to drink water, or you could say, yo quiero beber agua. So I want to drink. Uh, remember, the verb tomar can also mean to drink. So those are the 10 verbs. I highly recommend you write them down. Practice some of the examples that we went over today. Spanish can be very difficult at times because all these verbs, at least the majority of the, even these simple ones, have different meanings, can be used for different things. But again, the best way to master these is to continue to consume Spanish, but also be on the lookout for when you hear these words or when you see these words written and focus on how they are being used. What do they mean in correlation with the sentence that they are in? By doing that over and over again, it'll become second nature. So don't think about these words too much. Write them down. Maybe just study them like for two to five minutes every day until you master them in addition to consuming a lot of Spanish. So this should be something that you use, you write in your note cards. These words should be words you write in your note cards. Maybe write the definition of them or what they mean in English and then write just one example of each one on a note card and then review that note card tomorrow, then three days from now, then a week from now, and just keep using space repetition to, um, to do that, to, to practice. All right. So I hope you found this video helpful. And if you are looking to take your Spanish to the next level to improve your speaking and comprehension ability, click that first link in the comment section. I'll also put that link in the description. That'll take you to our website. You can also go to speakspanishfaster.com slash YouTube. And I've put together a new little like link tree page where you can check out um, quick links to all of our best courses that can find you, meet you where you are at in your Spanish learning journey and help you learn Spanish faster. If you enjoyed the video, of course, please do me a big favor. Help us out by hitting that thumbs up, hit the like button, comment below. Let me know what else you need help with. Anything, you know I got you. And last but not least, please do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications so you never miss another video. Until next time, I'll talk to you then.